today we are going to build something really cool because for months and months people have been requesting deep cool coolers on top of our benchmark charts or at least somewhere on our benchmark charts. Now we got into contact with deep cool and they got us. Uh, it's not exactly what I hoped for but let's be honest this is a freaking cool case. This is the CH. 510, yeah, CH510 mesh digital. And, and it's a really freaking cool case. It's got a little monitor over here. And this one is supposed to show you the CPU temperature, the GPU temperature, the whatever temperature you want to set it to. No, I think it's limited to CPU and GPU, but we're going to find out. So for today, we're going to build a PC inside of this puppy. And for this, we're going to use a bit of new gear because we got a brand new motherboard from ASRock that they just sent over. This is a re it's not a rebrand it's more like an update it's an updated phantom gaming z790 pg riptide wi-fi wow that that's a lot of words for a motherboard name but it's brand new and it's made with intel 14th gen in mind or at least i was told so in the email which is kind of funny because it doesn't say intel 14 in no way shape or form anywhere oh no it does here supports 14th gen yeah the, the website didn't this is supposed to be for intel 14th gen out of the box because we don't have any 14th gen yet we are going to stay on intel 13 this is the 13700k which is still an amazing cpu so why the hell not and then for the gpu it's going to be our trusty old Gainward Phantom 4080 because that thing just looks hella cool. Now before I continue with more parts because that's going to be a funny one let's just put a few things into the motherboard. Yeah brand new with that brand new smell. Oh this is addictive. Oh, that be quiet screwdriver does do something good. Okay this is kind of cool. Completely toolless removal. can now just find out how to put this one back. Uh, okay, it's supposed to be like that. I'm, I'm sorry. Did I mount these in the correct orientation? Yes, I did. <sighs> me idiot, me idiot, me idiot. I forgot that I need to do this first. Uh, I screwed up the most satisfying part about all of this. Okay, now before we continue, we got a little care package from Vcaller the other day, and this is supposed to be DDR5 RAM. This is 5600CL. It doesn't say anything. It says just PC5 44800. I don't know these numbers by heart. Why doesn't it say the CL? Okay, then I would need to 5600. CL36, there we got it. It's CL30. Why doesn't it say anything on the box? Well, anyway, this is supposed to be just regular DDR5 5600 2 times 16 gigabytes CL36. Yeah, CL36. However, these here are not just plain old two sticks of 16 gigs of RAM because. <laughs> And I, and I found this so funny when I first saw it. You know how everybody just does two sticks because uh, two sticks are basically enough for every regular normal use case and everybody's dog will tell you to just do two because four is a way more complicated, especially on DDR5, less stable, less here, less there. However, at the same time, four sticks just look better. And Vcolor has like the most genius and the most stupidest way to achieve four sticks, which are actually too. So what we got here are basically Today is not my day. Okay, so what we got in all of these boxes are four sticks, two of which are actually RAM and the other two are just dummy sticks where it says RGB no DRAM. 
and these are basically just adapters to get the ARGB going. So all you do is install these two in the right slots and the other two you would just put in the in the leftover slots giving you the four sticks aesthetic while only two of which are really sticks giving you or not giving you the headaches of you know four sticks however with dual channel performance a lot cheaper and they look like four. Oh, this is such a brilliant way and, and, and it's such a stupid way at the same time. I love this. Stick number one. Stick number two. And here we got the dummy sticks, which are doing nothing but displaying ARGB. And I'm wondering, okay, you can see at the very end, I hope you can see there are a few pins that are still connected so something is going through and I'm guessing that's where the ARGB connection is going to or from. Makes total sense but oh my god this is such a brilliant way of doing something stupid. And can we just admire how beautiful all of this now looks and how clean? Bit of RGB here, a bit of RGB there, probably some RGB here as I know ASRock and probably more RGB on the back. Yep. There is going to be a lot of RGB for something that is not supposed to be so much RGB. Okay, the board is pretty much done. So let's open up the case for the first time on camera. This is the CH510 from Deepcool. And this is more in the category of budget cases. However, it is it is Deepcool. So it's, it's not like this is a bad... Thing. For example, the mounting mechanic for, for the tempered glass side panel, which is A, magnetic, and B, can be just lifted on the top, which is <laughs> amazing. And I really wanted to see how far I can go with that little monitor in the front, ignoring the fact that this is so much mesh, which will result in so much performance, which is going to be great. So let's start by installing the front fans. Yeah, and here we got that one thing that I do not like about the case, which is this cable hanging. I, I would really have preferred for it to be like the pushpin system that everybody does nowadays. However, I can kind of live with it, considering how budgety the case is or how inexpensive it is. This one is going for a good price, like like 80. I want to say anything wrong, but it was in the, the range of 80 something euros or even below. I don't remember. I will put it here on the screen. It wasn't so expensive, so. I can live with these little, you know, little quirks that are missing that I would have liked to have. These are the 1100 RPM Silent Wing 4 140s because, let's be honest, with all of that mesh in the front of the case, I won't need more. And I just wanted to see how silent I can make the case and how well it still performs to have something for the benchmark charts later on. And I just need to keep in mind that I lose quite a lot in the top because of that little monitor. And now let's fiddle this cable back in. Okay, front fans installed. They are not blocking the uh, top display or whatever you want to call it. Looks pretty fine to me. Okay, compatibility wise, this case is astonishingly compatible. Let's say you could, I forgot the mesh. Oh, I forgot the, the filter. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, filters back in place. So compatibility wise, the case is relatively awesome. You can slap up to 80X motherboards in there without any problem. And for the GPU, we are going 4080 today, but like a 4090 should fit in here, like the average 4090. And what makes me really happy is that the case has a built-in GPU holder. So basically I won't be afraid that my 4080 will start to break during B-rolls, which uh, believe it or not, that can become an issue. Whew. We are done. For the power supply, I just took out the first best Be Quiet Pure Power 11 FM 12, no, a thousand, a thousand watts because why the hell not? And we're going to use these braided black cables from, I believe, 
bit phoenix because they look hella awesome and I really wanted to uh, limit the usage of ARGB as much as possible because we are already a bit uh, too much on the ARGB side for my taste but I know people like it so we keep doing it. I just don't get why. Done done. I really need to give Deepcool some credit here. It is astonishingly easy to get to all of the cables in the bottom and then it's not like this is the most open, biggest, whatever case there is in the world. But for its size, this was surprisingly easy. Now, the cooling, the next important part. Because we already have these silent wing, yes, those silent wing 4140s in the front, I thought, why not go all in and use Be Quiet's newest silent loop, no, pure loop 2 into 80, because it got these silent wing 4140 lookalike or looking like uh, fans. And it's an amazing AIO, it, is re it was really freaking good astonishingly good for my take so why not use this one which is going to be fine with the 13700k i have no doubt there and i think i'm going to install it like this so that the tubes are going on the right side i should have thought about this beforehand Perfect. And you know what I didn't do again, which is like a reoccurring theme on this channel? I didn't start the system or the motherboard. Maybe it's dead. Maybe it came dead on arrival. Things happen. DOA. Stuff happens. And I didn't even bother to check. I'm going to regret this again. And I somehow never learn. I swear to God, if something is dead on arrival this time, I'm going to explode. One hour later. <sighs> Finally, we are getting to an end of this cable mess. So let's just quickly put on that water block and start finishing this here up. Oh yeah, this is one nasty application right there. Please do not repeat this. I don't want to be like hitting my own drum rolls, but this is some clean cable work today. And what the hell did I do here? What? what? <laughs> well, how do I do this? Like stash the cable right there. Great. Uh, yeah, this is like one of the most minimalistic cable, like in the front cabling that I ever did. There is basically nothing. Nothing hanging, nothing dangling, nothing. This is clean, just clean. Great. I'm happy with that for once. And now the moment that everybody is always waiting for. Beautiful. And now let's just adjust quickly that GPU bracket so that it actually does something. Perfect. And it's not blocking any of the fans. Final step. My beloved companion, the 20,000 pin NVIDIA GPU Octopus. Oh, how much I hate this thing. At least not a lot is seeable. The moment of the moments, everything is plugged in, everything is theoretically or everything should be theoretically running. So let's see if the board lived in the first place. I should have tested it out of the box. This thing performed like a beast. 
First we got the monitor to run, which you hopefully can see or cannot see, I'm not so sure about that and I have a few comments about it, but first let's get into some numbers. Now we are not going to benchmark games or anything that really doesn't make sense. It's a 13700K, it's a 4080 RTX, Google it, somebody did it. Uh, we are not here for that, we are more here for the case. And for the case I let Cinebench run in a loop and I had Firmark at 1080p this time because I had my like mobile monitor monitor and that's just a 1080p monitor. Anyway, I had uh, Cinebench running in a loop, I had Firmark 1080p on all settings high running in a loop. At that point the CPU reached 4.3 GHz on the P cores and 4.2 GHz on the E cores. Now mind you everything was back to stock except for the XMP profile which was enabled, so no fan curve, it was the default whatever ASRock will do and at that point the CPU was already hitting above 220 watts which is wild, but that's how it is nowadays. And while doing so, the CPU was sitting at a 92 degrees C package, which is fine for me. It's a 280 mil AIO, it's one of the most weirdly powered consuming platforms out there, so uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, the silent, although the pure loop 280 can definitely handle a 13700K if you do Cinebench as a fetish. For the GPU, yeah, even if it was drawing 240 watts, it was just 1080p, so it was sitting at 58 degrees C. No wonder, it was very very cool in here, so uh, no issue there. But as a whole, I am quite surprised how the whole thing performed. Now, one thing I do mind slightly, or, now, let's give the case a few comments. One thing I did not particularly enjoy is first the back fan which is significantly louder, it is not loud, but it is significantly louder than the any of the be quiet fans. So this is the one you will notice immediately, especially because I'm sitting behind it so it's like the first I'm facing, which is not ideal I know, but it's the loudest one. Now the next thing I did not particularly enjoy is that there is no hole for the GPU power plug, which can be an issue and it was an issue because I needed to squeeze all of that crap from behind and it was kind of a Annoying. Then the next thing was there are no holes for the front fans going to like the back except if you route the cables all the way up or all the way down, which I don't like to do. I would like to have like one hole in the center. Now, there is some hole in the center, but a PVM plug doesn't go through it. It's just too small, which was annoying. Uh, then the last, like not really negative comment, but it's, it's kind of weird. I will try to show it to some degree, but the monitor has a very um, narrow angle from which you can look at it. If you look at it from the left side, so from here, it's fine. It, it, you can see the numbers. But if you look at it from the right side, which I hope you can do, I will do in the B-rolls, the numbers get so freaking weird. It doesn't, it, I don't know what happens with that monitor, but it, it, it looks really freaking weird. But other than that, the case is really fine. Performance-wise, I love this build, especially those fake DDR5 RAM stick. Now, from here, I cannot see the difference. For me, this is a 4 RAM stick system, and knowing how 4 RAM uh, stick systems in DDR5 are running, especially at like higher frequencies, uh, yeah, um, this is an option, which might... It, it might sound so dumb. This is for me the equivalent of a sound generator inside a diesel engine car. I would probably be happy having a sound engine if I would have a diesel car. However, if I would be sitting in a in a real engine car, I would be laughing my ass off about that sound generator and making jokes about anybody who is driving something like that. So this is kind of a situation like that. It's cool if you don't have the alternative, but the alternative is kind of real. This is kind of fake, but considering what they've done, this is fine. It looks fine and uh, on, on that note, the RAM are stable. XMP profile was immediately taken, was running exactly as advertised, so no problem there, no stability issues. I had the whole thing running for an hour or something, and considering that there was no issue, I'm, I'm fine with the stability so far. Of course, you could do like more advanced testing, mem tests and stuff, but for now, this seems fine. So yeah, I'm really glad how this turned out. I think the design of the whole system looks very fine, and the monitor is just a little, little extra. I, I like what they did here. So yeah. For today, this is going to be it. This is going to be it for the deep cool build. And now I'm finally ready to do the review about this case. The first deep cool 
product on this channel. Hopefully followed by a bunch of cool us next week, but we will see about that. We will see what Deep Cool thinks about our review, but for today, this is going to be it. I would like to thank you for watching, and if you want to continue watching, have a look at our series where we build this obnoxious looking box. It's not what you think it is. It has a hole on the side, that's true, but it's not for that. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.